top of the pelvis. So we know, oh my God, Raymond's gone. All right, so he's out. We know that the pelvis, the pelvis can, change can change position. position. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. Oh, he's back, you knew he'd be back. You can't keep a good man down, especially if he's already dead. <laughs> See, Raymond's back and he's gonna help us because today we're gonna talk all about scapular winging. It's a common problem and it's actually a complex problem to fix, but it could be a little easier if you take the right step-by-step -step approach, okay? And we have to do that. What is scapular winging for those of you that aren't really aware of what it is? It's the position of the shoulder blade in relation to your rib cage, especially as you move your arm. So it's when the shoulder blade wings or pushes back this way. If you looked at it from the side, it's doing this. The inside border is pushing away from your rib cage. Okay, so it creates this gap. It actually looks like a pair of angel wings if someone were to look at you from the back. Well, there's a big problem with this. If you have any movement dysfunction at all in your shoulder blades, you can assure yourself that you have a movement dysfunction in your arm and your shoulder as you try to raise it up over your head because you cannot raise your arm over your head without having movement of your shoulder blade. I could do that with Jesse right now. If he were to raise his arm up over his head, all the way up, he gets to the top only because he's got two thirds of the movement working well here and one third of the movement working well in his shoulder blades. But if I were to come in here and hold his shoulder blade down like this, he actually can't raise it beyond that point because I've stopped the motion. So we can see right away, if you're not moving properly here, you got big problems. And it's a big common problem to have shoulder issues when you're lifting. So what we've got to do is we have to fix this. So Raymond, thank you. You're back, I'm so happy. <laughs> if you come here, Jesse, go ahead and take off your shirt. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to assess your posture and what you look like here as you raise your arms up over your head towards the front of you. So have somebody take an iPhone and film what you look like. You're going to take your arms in front of your body. You see Jesse's gains here. Go ahead and raise all the way up, all the way up. Okay, and then come back down. Don't just drop them, come down a little bit better than that. So raise them all the way up, raise them all the way up. Okay, now come on down. Okay, right there, stop. Right here, you see where this pops off his rib cage. You can see I can fit my fingers literally underneath his shoulder blade here. That is a wing. The medial side here is winging off his rib cage that way. That's the first thing you want to look for is to see if you get that on the way down. On the way up, here's a couple other things you want to look for. First of all, look at the position of his shoulders. This one is clearly higher than his right shoulder. Okay, he's got this up. That's because of a tightness in the muscle that we're going to address here. The second thing is as he went up, he had a little bit of a head nod there that actually reinforced the fact that I know that this levator scap here is tight. We're going to want to address that. And then the other thing is, does he get a bunching up in here of the rhomboids as he's doing this whole motion? You would see that the shoulder blades would kind of come together and sort of make a crack down the middle. You didn't see as much of that there, but if you do, then I'm going to show you what to do. So the first thing is, you have to address these via stretches. Jesse, you're going to come right here. Do you want to address these via stretches because if these muscles are tight, we all know that having a, a winging scapula is going to be caused by a weakness in the serratus anterior muscle. But if that weakness is caused by the fact that the muscles on the opposite side of the, of the serratus are tight, then all the strengthening in the world is not going to ultimately fix the problem. You have to stretch the muscles that are causing the problem on the other side of the serratus. So I mentioned levator scap, I mentioned rhomboids. You could do the two stretches like this. The rhomboid stretch, you're gonna put your butt into the wall, Jess, and you're gonna take your hands out in front of your body here and you're gonna reach out, keep your butt up, anterior tilt to the pelvis there, reach, 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 until you feel the shoulder blade stretching out. Okay, he's reaching as far as he can to stretch this out. Okay, get that, just like that, there you go. Now go ahead one more time, reach out, hold, reach, there you go, like that. So go ahead and turn so you can just see what they're doing, all the way like this, you're getting this stretch right here in these muscles that pull the shoulder blades here together. Okay, the next thing, it's even better. It's the levator, the thing that's causing him to have all that head nod and things going on and the raising of the, the, the higher left shoulder. 
you're going to stretch that. You're going to look down to the opposite pocket of the side that's tight. So if you have a high left shoulder, you're going to look down towards the right pocket. You put yourself back up against the wall, shoulders back and down. You're going to look in towards that pocket. Use your hand to kind of just reinforce and hold it in that position. And then you're going to raise this arm up because the levator is a muscle that wants to downwardly rotate the scapula. By going like this, we're upwardly rotating the scapula. So we're getting a good stretch on that muscle that's right here. Can you feel it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so we want to make sure that we're stretching this how many times a day? How often? A couple times a day for a good portion of time. 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Just do it a couple times, but it's more routine in terms of doing it regularly throughout the week. It didn't take you one night to get here. It's not going to take you one night to fix it. If you don't have any of those problems, the next thing you want to do is assess your posture and standing. Two things, you're looking at the posture from the front and you're looking at the posture from the side and you have to look at the posture from the other side. You can see that on this, this side here, even though we've been working a lot with Jesse to try to help fix this, this side is a little bit rounded. So it's indicating to me he's got internal rotation here or some of the internal rotators are too tight that are causing that, maybe even a weakness in the external rotators. But subscapularis, number one. Lats, number two. Pec minor, number three. All three stretches, I've actually done videos on how to stretch those out. So to avoid this thing becoming 30 minutes long, I'll link those in the description below on how to stretch all of those. But you want to stretch those because if those muscles are tight and you're creating this sort of shoulder posture, you can mechanically cause a weakness in the serratus by impacting the thoracic nerve, the long thoracic nerve. It's a nerve that literally feeds the serratus anterior. So if that nerve is all screwed up, you're going to get a weakness in the muscle that it connects to. Right. So you can strengthen the serratus all day long, again, like we said before, and do nothing to fix the problem because you haven't fixed the issue that's causing the weakness in the first place. So if you test out and you see that you have this roundedness or this depression on one side and standing, then you have to stretch and follow the stretches I linked below for each of those areas. Let's say you're clear on all of those. You're not tight in any of those muscles that I just showed you. Now you want to move on to strengthening the serratus anterior. In all instances, you are going to strengthen the serratus anterior. It's just whether or not you add this group of stretches that we just talked about and linked below or the first two stretches that Jesse and I did against the wall. So let's go now to the uh, actual exercises themselves. Okay, so if we're going to strengthen the serratus, which we need to do, then you need to know what you're doing. You need to make sure that you're protracting the shoulder blade here. Okay, it's going to travel around your body as you reach forward. But the other thing that it does that we sort of overlook and tend to forget is that it upwardly rotates the scapula. So we're going to get that by raising our arm up over our head. The shoulder blade is going to upwardly rotate. We can actually incorporate that into the exercise together with protraction to get a better exercise. The first one we do here is something called an apple picker. So Jesse's going to have a band wrapped behind something sturdy behind him. He's going to raise out in front of him. Now as he's reaching, he's reaching and trying to get that protraction here of his arm. The whole time reaching, he's going to act like he's going to grab an apple from up here. And when he brings it, he grabs the apple. Now he's bringing it down. He's trying not to let his arm just come down and then retract here. He's trying to keep it here, keep the protraction there, especially as the eccentric contraction as he comes down right there. He puts it right in the basket. Now he reaches back out again. Reach, reach, push, 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 push. Don't lean. Don't lean. Push. There you go. So he's pushing through here to work that muscle. He grabs and then he comes down and he puts it down inside here. So you work on that higher repetitions, but you do them one repetition at a time. This is better off done as 20 sets of one as opposed to one set of 20. I want quality. You're trying to, it's called neuromuscular re-education. You're literally trying to re-educate the muscles to get them to fire because they've probably been dormant for a long time. Let's look at some more. Next thing we have is a lean back push up. And what you're going to do here is again, we want to be able to get that protraction, but we're going to force upward uh, rotation here of the scapula by having his body change position. So a push up plus is good. Let's demonstrate that first. Jesse, get up in here. He's going to basically push through his shoulder blades, trying to wrap them around his body. He keeps a pretty good position here of his low back. He's just trying to push around. But now what we can do is I can have him start to lean back towards his heels, but the goal is push, push, push forward, forward, forward as hard as he can. Where do you feel it? Under here? Right there. So he's feeling it in the serratus. You'll feel this immediately if you do this yourself. Come back to the front. So again, reset. Remember, always quality reps. Push through. There's the plus. Now as he's leaning back, 
We're getting elevation because the arm is coming up over the body, but he's pushing and pushing, leaning, pushing as hard as he can away from him into the floor, there, and then come back. Okay, so you're going to do those as your second exercise. Let's move on to the third. Okay, the third exercise is a BAM pull apart, but you're not looking to squeeze your shoulder blades together as much as you can. You want to sort of work on the eccentric ability to keep your arms away from your body as you pull back into the pull apart. Right. Okay, so go ahead and you grab the band, you spread it apart there, but the arms are here, get this posture good here. You are in this protraction here. Jesse's doing the same thing he's done on the floor and in the other exercises so far. Now pull apart while still trying to keep this relationship. Get up here, top, there you go. Pull, 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 good, right there. Now as you reach out, slow, 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 and let it reach and reach and reach. Okay, now pull apart. Keeping it here. Okay, just like that, you want the control without, now go ahead and show them a pinch shoulder blades together. From here, go ahead, do a regular, a regular, regular one. Go ahead, just pull apart. There you go. That's what most people are doing there. We're not looking for that in this exercise. That's a different exercise meant to strengthen the rhomboids. What we're trying to do here is work on the serratus and you do that the way I just showed you. Okay, next up is the wall screw. This one here is going to give us a chance to protract into a wall. It's a good beginner exercise. Get your hands here. The screw part comes in in a second. But the key, again, when we do these exercises, is not to, let's show them the wrong way. It's not to just round out through the thoracic spine, because sure we're getting some protraction here, but really we're getting a lot of compensation here through our spine, which is not what we're looking for. So you get back in this position. Now, once you're here, if you keep this uh, nice and straight, the protraction is going to be just like that. Okay, so we, we're isolating the serratus activity there, and we get into the, the punch. Go ahead. Now, from here, we screw our arms this way into external rotation, just like that. Good and then come out and reset. So here, push like that, yep, nope, watch that thoracic spine, there you go. And then screw, go screw Jesse. I love being able to tell Jesse to go screw himself. Here, down and reset, All right? So another good option, and again, no excuses here because everybody's got a wall and we can just make sure, it's just make, you know, making sure that you're doing it the right way. That's just going to help you here in the long run. Okay, next one. This is, a, a, again, a more advanced version, and it's after you have the control and reawaken this muscle. You, you still need to make sure that it's staying strong, especially compared to all the big muscles that you're working on in your body all the time. So we want to make sure we get the protraction. We're going to do this as a dip plus. So you get into a dip position. So with Jesse in this dip position now, he's pretty much straight up, right? So we're not going to get much protraction here. Let me raise this just a tad when you're up there. He's not going to get much protraction unless he leans forward. So he leans forward, his whole body, keeps his locked out. Now he goes into the protraction of his shoulders, just like that. He lifts up into a plus, and all he's doing here is holding for an isometric hold of about five seconds to ten seconds, however much he can, he can withstand. You're going to get your abs working here too. We've called this exercise of the gymnast abs before, but the real focus here is to push through the shoulders and not just lifting up through the abs. Okay, do a couple more. Just like that, and you're holding there, okay? We have one more exercise, the straight arm push down. I'm going to show you how to do that, and we'll wrap this all up. All right, finally, we have that second overload exercise. Remember, it falls in line after you've already built up that mind muscle connection in the dormant serratus. It's the uh, straight arm push down. You could do it to work the serratus by tweaking the way you do the exercise. Get in this position here. You set up with a good position here of the thoracic spine. You're not rounding it forward. From here, it's just a small movement of the protraction, just like that, of the scapula to isolate the serratus. And now we load up the weight that allows us to do the straight arm push down. Come back up to the top. Reset, up nice and tall, good, just the protraction there, and he's able to load up the weight heavier than he does on the other exercises. And remember, this is one of the exercises that comes in, as I said, after you've already built it up. So remember the progression here. Identify first if you have any of those tightnesses. The ones in the opposing muscle groups, the ones that oppose the serratus, if they're tight, they could be causing weakness in the serratus, and you're never going to fix that unless you stretch those first. The other muscle groups that cause internal rotation and literally cause a physical impingement on the nerve itself. Unless you fix that and take the impingement off the nerve, you're never going to address the weakness in the serratus. Once you get to the point where you're doing exercises to strengthen the serratus, you have lots at your disposal here. Work your way up. Choose a few. Make sure that you're routinely doing them because it didn't take you just 
a day or two to get weak and to cause a situation in the first place. It's not going to take you a day to fix it. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. In the meantime, if you're looking for a program that puts the science back in strength, realizes that we're all going to have to use our shoulder at some point, unless we just sit here and go like this all day with a remote control, head to athletics.com and get our athletics training program. And uh, again, let me know what you want to see here in future videos, and I'll do my best to cover it for you in the days and weeks ahead. See ya.